Hi friends, welcome to my recap of Watchtower Study Article 5, which will be studied at Jehovah's Witness Zoom meetings the week of March the 28th, 2022. Friends, Watchtower is going to teach the indoctrinated how to make the best use of their time in this article. So let's dive right in. Here it is, friends. Notice the preview. Jehovah is our best friend. We treasure our friendship with him and we want to get to know him better. It takes time to get to know someone. This is also true when we want to continue developing a relationship with Jehovah. In view of the hectic lives we lead, how can we make the time to draw close to our Heavenly Father and how will we benefit by doing so? Here we go. The first couple of paragraphs starting at the top in the boxes. We love spending time with people we care about. A happily married couple likes nothing better than to spend a quiet evening together in the next box above all however we love spending time with our god hmm we can do this by praying reading his word meditating on his purpose and qualities beautiful qualities paragraph two although we enjoy spending time with jehovah we face a challenge here it comes we lead busy lives which can make it difficult for us to schedule time for spiritual activities paragraph three in the box there is another more subtle threat to our time. If we are not careful, we could allow activities that are not wrong in themselves to rob us of time that we could use to draw closer to Jehovah. All right, so they go into recreation and how, friends, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses can never do enough. They have to do more and more and more. The rest of paragraph three says that the Je average Jehovah's Witness can have little time left for spiritual activities as a result of recreation. Paragraph four, in this article, we'll consider why we need to set proper priorities. It's the same nonsense. Paragraph five, choose the best course in life. Young people are often concerned about the best way to spend their life. What's underlined? School guidance counselors and unbelieving family members may urge them to pursue higher education in preparation for a prestigious career in the world. That path would likely consume a great deal of their time. On the other hand, parents and friends in the congregation may encourage young people to spend their life in Jehovah's service. Yeah. What can help a young person who loves Jehovah to make the best decision? But notice on the bottom right by the arrow, friends, unbelieving family members will encourage higher education, which will lead to worldly riches, as opposed to congregational family and friends equates to a lifetime in Jehovah's service, and this is the best decision. We've always heard this. Remember, stay alive till 75. Remember all of the talks, the district conventions. The talks were basically about doing more in Jehovah's service, pioneering, quitting school because the time is right. This is what being a Jehovah's Witness is all about, working and working and working until you can't work anymore for Jehovah. Notice what's underlined. The paragraph asks, what is the will of Jehovah? What decision will please him? Which path will result in my making the best use of my time? The days are wicked, remember. So what's the will of God for our lives, friends? I'd like to explore what the Bible has to say versus what the organization has to say. There's the questions in red on the top left, friends. But notice paragraph six in the box, set proper priorities. Sometimes making the best use of our time involves choosing between two activities that are not wrong in themselves. Watchtower says the will of Jehovah is setting proper priorities. The paragraph then goes on to tell the story of Mary and Martha, friends, okay? They cite Luke 10, down in the bottom pink box, Mary cherished that limited time with who? Jesus. But we cherish our time with Jehovah. Friends, what I wrote in pink on the left, the application in Luke chapter 10 is to spend time with Jesus. Why, do watch, why does Watchtower direct their followers to cherish time with Jehovah? Isn't that interesting? Paragraph seven, make the best use of your time with Jehovah. Recognize that prayer, study, and meditation are part of worship. They cite Psalms 5-7, but up at the top on the right, I'd like to start with verse 2. Hearken unto, unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. And then there is verse 7 that they cite. Friends, I want to show you 1 Timothy 1, 15-7, which is what I have there. Notice it says, what's underlined? Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners 
Paul says, of whom I am chief. He continues on with, in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life, ev life everlasting. Verse 17, now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Who is the King, friends? And to whom do we believe to attain everlasting life? It's Jesus. Jesus is the King. Nowhere in Scripture does it say that God the Father is the King. Okay? Matthew 2, 1 and 2, down at the bottom, Jesus was born in Bethlehem as the king of the Jews. Jesus was born the king, okay? He was always the king. Let's move along. I wanted to just show you this picture. It's so interesting. The caption for this picture says, can you find a quiet setting to do your personal study? Notice, right? People who have priorities other than serve Jehovah are slobs. You see the clothes laying around, the, the stuff on the floor, sports is bad, video games are bad, chips are bad. I thought this was very interesting. Paragraph seven goes on with, when we meditate, we are considering Jehovah's appealing personality. I listed Philippians four, eight, and nine here, friends, to show you what scripture says on what we should meditate, okay? Paul says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, think on these things. And the God of peace shall be with you. Watchtower says that we should consider Jehovah's appealing personality. Does the God of Watchtower have an appealing personality? When we meditate on the God of Watchtower, do we have peace? Really? When we were in, did we ever have peace? Because I want to show you what Watchtower publications provide for the indoctrinated to meditate upon. Remember these pictures? Does this give you peace, friends? The photo on page 28 there is from a children's book. Under the caption, Jehovah will destroy the bad ones. Notice the woman, I call it a creature because when you see this picture, the face on this creature is frightening. She's carrying the body of a child. How is reading Watchtower literature and meditating on the Jehovah's appealing personality give you peace? Is any of that honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report? Even the, the governing body updates, are they good reports? Because I recap them every single month and I've been doing so for more than a year now. They're all about the same thing, devastation, grief, death, pandemic. Scripture tells you to do the opposite of what the organization tells you to do, friends. But we're gonna keep going because we're gonna look more at this, okay? Paragraph eight in the box. Consider the example of Jesus. Before he undertook his earthly ministry, Jesus spent 40 days in the wilderness and they cite Luke chapter four, verses one and two. The paragraph goes on to say that Jesus was able to pray to Jehovah and meditate on his father's will for him. Doing so, no doubt, prepared Jesus for the tests that would soon come his way. Notice Luke four, verse two, which I put there. It explains being 40 days, Jesus was tempted by the devil. As I've always said, Watchtower loves to focus on the verses that have to do with evil. They bring into this paragraph when Christ was tempted by the devil. Take note of this as I do my study article recaps, friends, even my recaps of the broadcasting and the updates. Uh, you'll see so many times that this is the case, but scripture is so much more than these verses. There's so much more to learn about the Bible when you get away from the standard verses that Watchtower loves to, to cite. All right, notice the picture, falling asleep while praying is bad. The caption says, can you set aside time to pray when you're most alert? I think about, there's nothing more that I'd rather fall asleep to than praying. It's not that I don't pray at other times. What do, we, what do you want to be doing when you're trying to fall asleep? 
What are you going to be thinking about? Wouldn't it be wonderful to be praying to God as you fall asleep in his arms, your heavenly father? The watchtower doesn't feel that way. Back to the paragraph, paragraph 10. On the final night of his life on earth, as his ministry came to an end, Jesus again sought out a quiet setting where he could meditate and pray. He found that setting in the Garden of Gethsemane. Paragraph 11 explains the story. It was very late in the Garden of Gethsemane. They cite Matthew 26, 37 through 39. Notice what I underlined there, friends. What Jesus was praying about was to let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. Watchtower wants to focus on the fact here, you'll see as we go into the next paragraph, that Jesus' disciples, his apostles, fell asleep, okay? But what this is about is Jesus knew that the sins of the world was going to be placed on him, that God the Father was going to put the full weight of his wrath on his son. So the beating, the torture that he got, he was marred more than any human, was not nearly as bad as what would happen to him as he bore the sins of the world. That's what these verses are about. Watchtower is just using them to discourage their followers from falling asleep. All right, in the box. When he found them sleeping, his apostles, Jesus again urged them to keep on the watch and pray continually. Matthew 26 there, what's underlined? <laughs> that he entered not into temptation. He did not want them. He wanted them to watch and pray that they did not get tempted. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Romans 8, friends, 1 through 6. Let me read that to you. This is Romans 8 is so amazing. Look at this. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, <laughs> sorry, my kitty has just awakened for some reason. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit of the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Friends, Jesus condemned sin in the flesh and made Christians alive in the spirit. Friends, you know I always do this in my video. In baptism, we were baptized to Christ's death, and raised to new life. That's what it means to be born again. Christ took on our sins. Therefore, when we believe in Christ, he gives us life. That's what this is talking about. The spirit is willing, but our flesh, we're still fleshly. <laughs> okay, we're still, we're still in this flesh. This flesh is weak but the spirit in us is alive. The spirit is willing. Let's keep going and I'll explain more. All right, so Watchtower continues in paragraph 12, choose the right time. Paragraph 13, resist distractions when you study. I found this really funny in the box. Ask yourself, what tends to interfere with my concentration during the meetings or when I'm trying to study? Could it be receiving calls, emails, or text messages on your electronic device? Can I tell you what interfered with my concentration? The sheer boredom of it all. They kept me confused and bored, and it was torture. Frankly, it was just torture. I don't know about you, but that's how I felt. Paragraph 14, ask Jehovah to help you focus. In the box, if you are worried or anxious, it may not be easy to set your concerns aside and focus on spiritual things. Friends, why would a Jehovah's Witness be worried or anxious? Notice Philippians 4, 6, and 7, which they cite, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. 
and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ. Do you know why the Jehovah's Witness is anxious or worried? I'm going to show you. This is why, friends. This is why. These are Watchtower publications. All right? The no blood policy. How do these pictures that go along with the content that's being presented, how do these apply to Philippians 4, 8, and 9? Whatever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, think on these things and the peace of God shall be with you. Friends, it's by design that Jehovah's Witnesses are worried and anxious. It's only natural. When we're constantly bombarded with death and dying and famine, disasters, pandemics, go bags, waiting for that call. What do you expect? Anyway, we're almost finished. Let's move on to paragraph 15. Time spent with Jehovah is rewarding. If you take time to talk to, listen to, and think about Jehovah, you'll be great, benefit greatly. How so? First, you'll make better decisions. The Bible assures us that the one walking with the wise will become wise. Friends, how is this photo beneficial? A wise person does not focus on these things. Do you see why Jehovah's Witnesses are not at peace, friends? The paragraph goes on in the box. So you spend time with the source of wisdom, Jehovah, you will become wiser. You will better understand how to please him and how to avoid making choices that hurt him. How do we please God? Okay, I'm going to show you Romans chapter 8 again, 7 through 10. Because the carnal mind, that fleshly mind, the one who is not in Christ, okay, is enmity against God. What does Enmity against God mean. Notice the definition, the quality of being an enemy. Verse 8, for they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of who? Christ. He is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Friends, that's what being born again means. Read the story, the account of Nicodemus. You're born again into Christ as a new creature, as a new creation. We're still here. We're still in this flesh that's dying and decaying, but our spirit is made alive. And that happens in Christ, not in the Jehovah of Watchtower, friends. That's how we please God, by being conformed to the image of his son. That's God's will for us. I want to remind you who Paul is writing to in Romans 8, verses 7 through 10. Notice Romans 1, 7. To all that are in Rome. These verses are not written to a select few. They're written to all believers in the in the church at Rome not just the governing body of the first century which there were none all Christians Paul's epistles the books that Paul wrote apply to all Christians read the first chapter and the first couple of verses of every single book you'll see to whom it was written and that it was not written to just a select few friends Paragraph 16 says you'll become a better Bible teacher. 17, your faith will grow stronger. Listen, friends, all of these things that Watchtower says we must do mean nothing. Galatians chapter 2 tells us that nobody will be justified by their works. What does it mean to be justified down at the bottom? Number two, it says in theology to pardon and, cle and clear from guilt. Notice Galatians 2. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Christ. Even we have believed in Christ that we must be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law, 
For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Verse 21 says, For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. We can't be saved by our works. Making more time for Jehovah will do nothing for us because Christ did the work for us. He nailed the ordinances of the law to the cross. We're made righteous now by the faith of Christ. We're justified by the faith of Christ. Believing, putting your faith in your Savior who died for you will give you everlasting life, friends. It's between you and your Savior. It's not about being a part of a religion. 18, in the box, we need to meditate on what we are learning. Really? Paragraph 19 in the box, love more than any other quality will motivate you to obey Jehovah, to make sacrifices in order to please him and to endure any trial. That is dangerous. Making sacrifices to please God and to endure trial. That is not scriptural at all, friends. I want to read you Hebrews 10. This is a long one. I'll try to read what's uh, underlined. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make them perfect. So basically what this is saying is that under the law of Moses, okay, the Jews had to come to the temple and offer sacrifices for their sins, but those sacrifices never made them perfect. It covered their sins until Messiah came. Let's keep going. Verse three, but in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Verse five, wherefore, when he came into the world, meaning Jesus, he said, sacrifices and offering thou would not, but a body have you prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you've had no pleasure. Verse nine, Jesus said, then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He takes away the first, meaning the law, that he may establish the second, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Which can, uh, verse 11, And every priest stands daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, meaning under the law, which can never take away sins. But this man, Jesus, after which he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, verse 14, for by one offering he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Who sanctified, friends? Those who are in Jesus Christ. Those who put their faith and trust in the Final sacrifice. Jesus sacrificed, him, sacrificed himself. He said it was finished and he sat down on the right hand of the Father. Watchtower wants you to believe that the indoctrinated must make sacrifices to please their God and to endure a trial. Two separate stories going here, friends. One is found in the Bible and is truth. One is found in the extra biblical texts called the Watchtower, okay? Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. They have their own doctrine. They want you to sacrifice for their God, but in the Bible, Jesus sacrificed himself for you. You have to reach out and grab that free gift, friends. What are you gonna do about that, friends? Are you gonna grab the free gift of salvation that's given to you by the Savior who died for you? That's the question. Do it today. It's a matter of a simple, a simple prayer between you and Jesus. Just cry out to God. You've prayed so many times. Pray to God, ask him to reveal the truth to you. Ask him to give you the peace that transcends all understanding and he'll save you, friends. Do it today. That's the recap 
for this January, the final study article in this January 2022 Watchtower. We're on to a new one for next week. Don't forget April 14th, about 6 p.m. New York time, I'll be doing a Lord's Supper the night before the memorial where Jehovah's Witnesses all over the world will be refusing to partake of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, friends, and passing the emblems. We'll be doing a Lord's Supper. We'll ex I'll explain what it's all about to you, and um, I'd love to have you join me. It's going to be live on YouTube right here on my channel. Okay, thanks so much for watching, friends. Have a great day.